The automatic titration measurement program measures CD values at a single wavelength as a function of concentration or the number of titrations. Prior to performing your titration experiments, you will first need to prep the syringes. To do so, go to the menu bar and click Control ATS 530. The titration unit menu box will pop up and allow you to load and clean the syringes. To specify the total volume of the syringes, click Properties and enter the volume in the text box. This menu also lets you specify the speed of both syringes. We can start by cleaning the syringes, however you should make sure to perform this function after an experiment to remove any residual solution from the syringes and tubing. First choose a solution that you would like to flush through the syringe and tubing and make sure none of the tubing is directed into the cell. Select the syringe you would like to flush first and then click flush. Specify the flow path by selecting which valve loads the flushing solution and which valve will drain the flushing solution. In this example, valve A is used to load the solution so the tubing from valve A, syringe 1, should be placed into your solution beaker. Place the tubing to valve B, syringe 1, into a waste beaker. Clicking Exchange will switch the valve positions so that valve B is the flush path and valve A is the drain path. Enter the number of desired flushes and click Flush. After the solution in the syringe is drained, the syringe is repeatedly flushed the selected number of times and the piston stops at the top of the syringe in the drained position. Repeat the flushing process on syringe 2 by going back to the main titration unit menu, selecting syringe 2, and then selecting flush. To load the syringe, select the syringe to load from from the syringe drop-down list. The load option will load the entire syringe capacity, or 1 milliliters in this case. Click the load button and specify the valve positions used for loading the titrant solution and draining the solution as waste. Click Exchange to set valve B to the load path and valve A to the drain path. Specify the number of loads needed to completely fill the syringe and tubing with titrant. If the tubing connected to the sample cell is relatively long, select a larger value for the number of inflows. Insert the tubing connected to valve A into the titrant beaker and the tubing associated with valve B into the waste container. Once you click load, if the syringe is empty, 1 milliliters will be loaded into the syringe, drained, and then reloaded. If the syringe has any solution in it, the unit will load the entire syringe capacity, drain the solution, and then reload 1 milliliter of solution. Confirm that both the loading and draining tubes are filled with the titrant solution and that there are no air bubbles. If the tubes are not completely filled with the titrant or contain bubbles, repeat the loading process and or increase the number of inflows. You also have the option of loading or draining a specific volume of solution into or from the syringe. Under Syringe Direction in the Titration Unit menu box, select Outflow to load your solution into the syringe and select Inflow to drain solution from the syringe. Specify the volume of solution you would like to load or drain and then click Apply. Now that you have loaded your titrant solution into the syringe, you are ready to set up the parameters for your titration experiment. To do this, select the parameter icon in the menu bar or click Measure Parameters. In the parameter menu box, clicking the property button specifies the maximum and minimum cell volumes used. The volumes for syringe 1 and 2 have already been recognized and entered by the software based on the syringes used with the auto titrator accessory. The syringe valve option selects the flow paths to the sample cell. In this example, a tube is connected from valve A of syringes 1 and 2 to the sample cell. In the Titrator tab, the measurement sequence specifies the order for loading titrant into and draining sample from the sample cell. To select a syringe to use, check the box next to the syringe and then choose whether to use syringe 1 or 2. Selecting Load removes a desired volume from the cell and loads the syringe, while Inject injects solution into the cell. The wait time determines the amount of time to wait before a measurement is taken after the titrant or sample is injected or loaded and ensures equilibration of the sample after mixing. 
For example, a fixed volume of titrant is injected into the cell from syringe 1 and the mixture equilibrates for 10 seconds before syringe 2 is loaded with the same volume of reacted sample from the cell. The measurement sequence parameters would then be the following. Syringe 1, inject, wait 10 seconds, syringe 2, load, wait 0 seconds. The concentration parameters area allows you to specify the concentrations of the sample and the titrant, both in the cell and in the syringes, so that the corrected and final concentrations of the titrant and sample can be calculated. The concentration units can also be selected. An initial volume of the sample in the cell must also be entered. The minimum volume of a 1 cm cell is 1.5 mL, including the stir bar in the cell. In this example, if syringe 2 is only used to load the sample, it is not necessary to specify its concentration parameters. There are two titration modes, titration times and concentration. When titration times is selected, the volume of titrant is controlled, while selecting concentration controls the concentration gradient. For titration times, the target times allows you to enter the number or target titrations for each titration experiment. S1 is the volume of either sample or titrant to be loaded into or injected from syringe 1. S2 is the same as S1 except for syringe 2. In our previously mentioned example, S1 would be the volume of titrant injected into the cell and S2 would be the volume of sample removed from the cell by syringe 2. The concentration titration mode performs a titration aimed at reaching a specified titrant concentration. The target concentration is the final titrant concentration of the experiment. The step is the concentration gradient or the increments at which the concentration is changing to reach the target concentration. When in concentration mode, make sure the measurement sequence is in the following order or the concentration cannot be calculated. Load, wait time, inject, wait time, measure. In this case, since syringe 2 will be injecting titrant into the cell, the titrant concentration for syringe 2 must be entered in concentration parameters. This mode is particularly useful if you wish to keep a relatively constant sample concentration. Clicking the review button pulls up the titration table for the titration experiment. This table provides the number of titrations with the corresponding sample concentration, titrant concentration, titrant volume, and cell volume. A summary of the total number of titrations, approximate experiment time, and total titrant volume is also provided. The general tab allows you to specify what photometric modes you will be using. You can choose up to four channels where the data will be acquired simultaneously. CD is the circular dichroism signal, while LD is the linear dichroism signal. Both the HT and DC modes monitor the photomultiplier tube voltage. HT is the high tension voltage and controls the gain, which is the amount of current output for the number of photons reaching the detector. When a lot of light hits the detector, the gain and therefore the HT are low. The less light throughput, the fewer the photons reaching the detector and the HT increases, creating a larger amplification of the signal. DC compensates for the change in the light level. When the DC drops, the HT adjusts the gain to increase the DC voltage. CD over DC is the same as the CD signal when the DC is set to 1 volt. This mode is useful when DC varies with sample absorption and the HT voltage is fixed. ABS is the absorbance calculated from the HT voltage, while UV single ABS is the absorbance converted from the DC signal. UV single percent T is the percent transmittance converted from the DC signal. Both HT and DC FL are used to monitor the fluorescence signal when the fluorescence monochromator accessory is attached. The CD scale is the limit at which a CD signal can be obtained, and the fluorescence scale is the limit at which a fluorescence signal can be obtained. The DIT is the digital integration time or the response time. The longer the integration time, the better the signal to noise. A good starting point for selecting the DIT is one second. The bandwidth determines how much light reaches the sample. 
The smaller the bandwidth, the less light throughput, and the lower the signal to noise, but you can achieve better peak resolution. However, since CD peaks are broad, 1 to 2 nanometer bandwidth is fine. In the Wavelength text box, specify the wavelength you wish to monitor the CD signal at. If a Peltier accessory is attached, the Cell Unit tab will allow you to specify temperature conditions for the experiment. Click the control box to acquire the measurement at a specific temperature, which can be specified to the left of the control box. Then select the sensor to monitor and control the temperature at. Prior to starting the measurement, you can either select to keep the temperature within a specific range of the starting temp for a specific amount of time, or start the measurement after the temperature crosses the target temp for a specified number of times. Now we can click on the control tab. Here you can select whether you would like to correct your CD sample spectrum with a baseline spectrum. If you choose to correct with the baseline, you will only have the corrected sample spectrum, not the raw sample spectrum. You can also choose to open and close the shutter automatically. The Information tab allows you to populate the following fields. These comments are also included in the Spectrum Files in Spectra Analysis. The Data tab allows you to select whether to automatically save your data, as well as to specify which folder to save it to in the format the file is saved in. Saved data can be sent directly to Spectra Analysis once the measurement is finished. You can also choose to save your measurement parameters as well as open previously saved parameter files. Click OK to save the measurement parameters. After a measurement has been obtained, you can view the concentration corrected plot by selecting the concentration corrected tab at the bottom of the automatic titration measurement window. You can also view the previously specified titration parameters by clicking the titration parameters icon at the bottom of the window.